choirs and places where they sing. This is the first of a new series of weekly programs introduced by John Betjeman. This one comes from Magdalen College, Oxford, and we hear the choir of Magdalen College under the organist and instructor of music Bernard Rose, with Peter Dennison, organ scholar, and the Reverend John Sanderson, cantor. To introduce the series, John Betjeman. Forget the noise of traffic thundering into Oxford over Magdalen Bridge. Forget suburbs and the wizardry of architectural fashions, and look up at the bell tower of Magdalen College. There it stands on the banks of the Charvel, pinnacled, dominating, graceful and tall, and trembling into sound every quarter, and sometimes pouring a full peal over the trees and stones of the university city. It says, "Here's Oxford." To any one travelling hither by road from London, it was built in the reign of Henry the Seventh, about ten years later than the college below it, and it reminds us, as does Magdalen College, that Oxford was once a Cotswold stone city, with a few plaster and timber houses in the streets between the colleges, and all set in the meadows of the River Thames and its tributary, the Charvel. Magdalen is the most stately of the Oxford colleges. This is because, although it's not very big so far as numbers are concerned, it's the most spaciously laid out, with its own deer park and meadows beyond the cramped confines of the walled city. And in those meadows, in Addison's Walk, by the banks of the Charvel, you can find fritillaries, the brown-red snake's head flower, growing wild in spring. So have I sat too in thy honoured shades, distinguished Magdalen on Charwell's brink, to hear thy silver Woolsey tones so sweet. That was written by an 18th-century Magdalen poet, the Reverend James Hurdis. And so too have I paused and held my oar, and suffered the slow stream to bear me home, while Wickham's peal along the meadow ran. And so too, on a fine crisp night, I came to distinguished Magdalen, and parked my car illegally in a place which said private pass holders only, and walked by footpaths alongside the deer park, those deer we used as undergraduates to feed with sugar soaked in port. The moon silvered the long stone front of new building. It's a sort of 18th-century stone palace of a place between the deer park. And the lawns, and I walk through the low, narrow passage into the cloisters. Moon shone on those strange figures on the buttresses, and there was a light in the oriel window of the founder's tower, and lights in the long windows of the chapel and dining hall in front of me, lights in black pinnacled walls, and beyond them, silvery green from the public lighting in the high street, the bell tower. Set at a subtle angle, so that from this cloister you could see two sides of it at once, round the corner as the bells rang down, and into the Gothic antechapel. The chapel is T-shaped, as is New College Chapel, and indeed most Oxford College chapels. The antechapel is the top of the T. Now, although Magdalen is a medieval college with its cloisters and towers and pinnacles, and although it's Gothic. Except for that classical new building, to me it looks and feels Georgian. This may be because Magdalen is rich, and set in park and meadowland, and because there is a feeling of established prosperity. That organ screen which divides the antechapel from the chapel and choir, it's Gothic, I know, and so are the stalls. And so is the reredos behind the altar, with its rows of stone statues. But the Gothic is all in the style of Barry's Houses of Parliament. That's to say, it's 1840 Tudor, done in the 1830s by an architect called Cottingham, and it's none the worse for that. This late Georgian refitting of Magdalen Chapel, in the candlelight, for it is all lit by candles here in the chapel proper. The flickering darkness makes the carving seem less sharp than it is, and makes the building vaster than it is, and adds a stateliness 
to that superb stone organ screen. Yes, at night, Maudlin's candlelit chapel is one of the most beautiful interiors in Oxford. Its Georgian refurnishers knew this and deliberately kept the whole building in a dim religious light even by day. Musically, Maudlin College Chapel has had a fine history and it's appropriate that we hear first a piece by Maudlin's first organist, Richard Davy, who came here in 1492 when the chapel was first built. It's an extract from his St. Matthew Passion, one of the earliest musical settings in Latin, as was the custom of the time, and it is the first by an Englishman. We hear in this extract Jesus cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And we go on up the chorus, Truly, this was the Son of God. The part of the narrator is sung by the Reverend John Saunderson.
now a rich motet by John Shepherd, who was organist here in the 1540s. Spiritus Sanctus Procedens Artrono.
Next, O oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem by Richard Nicholson, who was appointed to Magdalen Chapel in 1595 and later became Oxford's first professor of music. Benjamin Rogers was appointed here in 1664 and his hymnus Eucharisticus is still sung from the top of the tower at five o'clock in the morning every May Day. Peter Dennison now plays one of his organ voluntaries.
In contrast to the 17th century English organ style, Peter Denison now plays the last movement of Hindemith's third sonata. some choral pieces by 20th century maudlin composers Veni Sancti Spiritus by H.C. Stewart We Will Rejoice by Bernard Rose himself and the Nunc Dimittis from the Evening Service by Hugo Coe
Bernard Rose ends this program by playing Bach's fugue in C major. was the first of a series of programs called Choirs and Places Where They Sing. It came from Magdalen College, Oxford, and we heard the choir of Magdalen College under the organist and instructor of music Bernard Rose, with Peter Dennison, organ scholar, and the Reverend John Sanderson, cantor. It was introduced by John Betjeman. Next week's program comes from Hampstead Parish Church. <laughs>